The American political system is corrupted beyond repair. It is broken to the point where it cannot be glued back together. It just, it just can't. The social system in this country has been totally corrupted beyond the point that it can be realigned with, with truth and justice or aligned for the first time with truth and justice. I don't see how that is possible now. The court system in this country has been stacked by this hideous, hideous son of a bitch, Donald Trump. And even if the fucker were to drop dead today, which, which just sounds glorious to me, but even if he were, the damage that he has done, the destruction that he has brought to just about every system upon which a democratic, self-governing people depend upon, um, that destruction has been so thorough and so complete that whether Trump is here or not is immaterial at this point. The people that have become Trumpists in the House and the Senate is astonishing. The people in the judicial branch who have become Trumpists is astonishing. And then you have the Nazis, the Christian fascist Nazis, I realize that's a redundant term, but a triple redundancy or double redundancy, in fact. But they have displayed their numbers and what they are willing to do. They are willing to smash anything that gets in their way. We are on the cusp of a fascist era in this country that I'm afraid can't be stopped. Because in order to stop it, it would require calling out in full force the United States military and rounding these people up and jailing them, uh, executing them, hanging them, well, you know, whatever it would take. It depends on how, how dedicated we are to a system of representative government, self-government, as to what we'll do to save it. It is clear that the Christian fascists in the House and the Senate are determined to destroy it. I think it's also clear if the filthy, scum-sucking pig Trump is still alive in 2024, <sighs> that yes, he probably will make another one run for the presidency. And given the tempo of the times, he just might win again. But even if he's dead and his corpse burned and scattered to the winds, it doesn't matter. Trumpist fascism is now loose in the land, and it is not going to be put back in the bottle. This is not like the attempt at fascism in the 30s. This is not like the attempt at fascism to stymie uh, Roosevelt's New Deal programs. This is not like the attempt uh, at fascism in the 30s to align the American people and the American government with the Nazis. This is something uniquely different. And it's not going to go away. It's here. Now, I remember three or four years ago, maybe longer than that, when it became apparent to me that we were drifting. I guess it was in the Bush uh, years, or maybe it was in the impeachment trial of Bill Clinton um, for lying under oath about his affair with Monica Lewinsky. And as I listened to the impeachment managers then, the Republicans who had, who had brought this case, I remember thinking at the time, I was working in Chicago at the time, but I remember thinking, this, this is the move toward fascism. It is actually happening. It, it is beginning. All, all prior to that was rhetoric. Now it's beginning, Christian fascism. Because I listened to the Christian fascists who, I didn't identify them that way at the time, but they were all Christian, and the points they were making were all fascist. And I listened to what they were saying, and, and the religious overtones, and um, the, the absolute 
disdain and disregard for what impeachment was supposed to be. It was purely an act of political revenge because of what happened to Dick Nixon and how the Republican Party suffered from 1974 forward. And this was a chance to get even, to take, um, granted, a, a, a stupid, can't keep his pants zipped up idiot like uh, Bill Clinton and use him as an example. But it was how the example was used. It was how the example was presented. It became clear that Christian fascism was on the move even though we had all the signs that we needed during the Reagan years. I don't believe Reagan was a Christian fascist. I don't know what Reagan was. Reagan was an actor. Um, but it became apparent that this movement was growing. It was growing in insidious ways that most of us didn't pay any attention to. I remember thinking at the time, all of the uh, FM radio stations that were in positions on the dial that broadcasters just weren't interested in supporting and maintaining and how those stations were put up for sale and how those stations were being bought, hundreds of them around the country, by Christian fascist organizations. And it's to the point now, if you are driving around in your car, especially if you are outside metropolitan areas, and you switch to the FM dial and start going through the stations, what you are going to hear is violence, Christian murderous violence directed against minorities, Jews, Muslims, liberals, Democrats, women, everybody. So all of a sudden, even though it wasn't all of a sudden, but here we find ourselves, and the absolute apex of this attempt to move this country to fascism, which has absolutely succeeded, it just hasn't been put into full operational mode yet. But the apex has been this second impeachment trial of this filthy scum Donald Trump. If ever there was a person who had committed crimes against the United States. It is this filthy orange pig, Trump. And yet, the Christian fascists in the House and the Senate will not, absolutely will not, allow him to be found guilty. Because their plans are much bigger than Donald Trump. They understand that Trump, uh, whether people like me want to admit it or not, are human and therefore have a life expectancy, and therefore uh, eventually will drop fucking dead, which will be a glorious day for me anyway, if I'm still here. But knowing that, the Christian fascists have set the stage over the past four decades for what is occurring right now. And that is turning this country into a Christian fascist nation. We are going to be isolated, we are going to be militarized in the wrong way. We are going to be um, restricted in, in not just our movements, but eventually in our thoughts, in our associations. We will not have redress to, agree, uh, to air our grievances to the Congress. I feel awkward as hell sitting here making these kinds of predictions, but... Um, they're not really predictions. I don't see them as predictions. I see them as observations. I learned a long time ago, you don't make predictions about the political system unless you want to be classified as a complete fool or a knave or ignorant. But you can make observations based on what you see. <laughs> and what I see is the fulfillment of what started in the 1980s. It's here. It is here. And the final denouement of self-governance, Democratic Republic United States, will come when the verdict is read, when the senators take their vote. Because you know what's going to happen, and so do I.
Hi, Truth Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts, so you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. Visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcast. As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go. And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth-seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com. And never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.